videos inside. God, this doesn't seem to be with it. He seems to always keep taking me outside, you know, outside the box. But then that's kind of like it's perfect for what I do or what the Lord has done with me in video because a lot of times sharing about hearing God speak is like for a lot of people dealing outside the box. It's kind of beyond their understanding. It's more out of their realm of experience that they don't really or they haven't thought of taking God in the word except in the fact that he can talk. God might hear you. <laughs> so much of life really is messed up because of our lack of understanding of who God is or what just the word God means. I mean, so many people get this all kind of like, you know, do your own thing kind of thing. And I'm amazed at, well, okay, you know. I've been recording, or I've been recording, I've been posting pictures with just one line of Bible verse, you know, verse by verse going through the Bible. And it was kind of interesting. I'm at a place where I was dealing with Abraham and the conversation that he had with Jesus. You know, we assume it's Jesus, but nobody says for sure it's the angel of the Lord, but you know, nobody knows for sure. We just say it is. We think it is. We we draw our own conclusions, but that's usually what most people come up with. But, like I said, nobody knows for certain except God, who was there, and Abraham. But the point being is that it was interesting the conversation they had with each other, you know, and how they dealt with each other. I kind of like that, you know, it was like they were out on their way and Abraham brought them under the cool of the day, you know, under the tree, you know, and met with them and talked to them under the trees, you know, and kind of shared with them and negotiated with them and, you know, fed them and took care of them and then, you know, let them go on their way. It reminds me of Goody Bow and doing this, you know, and sharing and relating Jesus in a personal way with the Word of God. You know, like today, looking at daily life, you know, I'm really amazed at how appropriate or how perfect the Word is to the day that you find yourself in. You find yourself in a little uh, tummy bird. Always looking down at the other sugar water and enjoying the blessings of God because they're like a fountain for him and like this kind of like never runs dry. And that's kind of what God wants to do in our lives, to make them like fountains to nourish other people, to cause them to come and taste and see that the Lord is good, to feed on the experiences of our lives so that we can share the hope that lies within us, the comfort that we've been comforted with, the blessings of God that we have experienced and how we can partake or impart them to each other. Even as Abraham did with the flocks that he had, he took a sheep, or he took a calf, if I remember right, a cow, and cut it up and made some bread and then made some meat, you know, they had meat and bread and ate and, you know, celebrated and kind of, you know, took their time, you know, it wasn't like they were in a hurry to go destroy something anymore. But I see in that a lot of what God wants to do with each and every one of us. He wants to reveal himself if we're willing to look at and understand when he comes to us in our day. Because he meets with us in some simple way. Whether it be through a hummingbird or a visitation by the angel of the Lord or whether it be a word or a person or a circumstance. God meets you every day. He's revealing himself every day to you. Because it says, today if you hear his voice, harden not your heart, it says provocation. So today he's speaking to you in some way. Now, I don't know if you got your fingers in your ears or you're full of wax, but God always is speaking. He's never silent. If you look before the throne in heaven, as we saw John recording what goes on there, there's no silence there. There's no, there will be a silence in heaven for the space of an hour, but other than that, there's 
there's always something going on. And no offense, but in my opinion, if you're not hearing from God, it's because you're not listening. God is not speaking. Reckon you yourselves to be dead unto sin, but alive unto God in Jesus Christ our Lord. He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. I, through the law, am dead to the law, that I might live unto God. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Because I live, you shall live also. I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all, and no man will even pluck them out of my Father's hands. I and my Father are one. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, which Christ sat on the right hand of God. For you are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. You know, I read something like that, and I'm amazed at how easily people run to other shelters, you know, like they run to other securities. They, they need to put their, their stock and trade, so to speak, in stock and trade, you know, trying to make them some kind of retirement. You know, or they, they need to go out and you know, purchase some super special high definition multiple volumes, multiple cameras, multiple security systems of protecting their possessions, their obsessions, their realizations of something they spent their money on, and now, ooh, you know, God forbid that something would happen to it because then they would lose it. I gotta protect it, I gotta keep it safe, I gotta hold it, I gotta keep it. I'm like, hey, you know what? I don't need a gun, I got that. Thank you. 
possession. You know, sure, you can have them around. You know, that might be a weekend idea. They're useful. You know, I find them. You know, I'm blessed with them. You know, I mean, guess what? If they were in my way, they'd be gone. They don't possess them. As a matter of fact, my wife does that. I would dispossess myself of things very quickly. I like how dumpster diving, so to speak. I call it missionary mining, by the way. My dumpster diving is missionary mining. You know, you're looking for buried treasure and you come up with all kinds of cool things. <laughs> you know, cut up boards and make boxes with that or kick or whatever it may be. But it's got to have a pride issue. I don't have to have a designer drugs, a designer clothes, a designer meat, a designer you know, lifestyle. I can enjoy my little office here and find myself in mansions in heaven enjoy the realization that other people don't seem to have. They don't get God in the okay? They don't get to hear God speak sometimes. Okay? They don't get to know God as a person or maybe as real as they can do it. be aware of it, don't you? But you see, when you're freed up and you're dead in dead to the world, but alive unto Jesus, man, you get to enjoy all that your Father has created. All of it. Hey, man, my God made this. Huh? Man, it's mine. <laughs> mine. You know, I just give it back to him when I'm done with it. Hey, Lord, it's from your house. You take care of it. You know, I'm not <laughs> dispossessed. So, don't get possessed by worldliness, but dispossess yourself of carnality, of possessions, of ungodliness, of seeking after every other thing except the kingdom of God. Because sooner or later, no matter how you try to keep yourself free from the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life, if you're full of possessions, they will possess you in the end. And you won't be able to walk away from it like that. Lot's wife looked back. She couldn't give up her possessions. She couldn't give up her security life. She couldn't give up her will of life. I hope, because that's a serious warning, Lot's wife. And it's a serious end to her life. You are beginning to dispossess yourself of this world so that when it's time to leave, 